Welcome back to Newsmax Now. Another woman with Hewlett Packard, CEO, on her resume joins the 2016 presidential race. Meg Whitman, who currently runs the PC company, has joined Chris Christie's campaign team. Of course, Carly Fiorina also ran HP for a while, but is running her own presidential campaign. The announcement comes via Bloomberg News, and it shows Whitman will be joining a, quote, powerhouse roster of 100 people who signed up to help the New Jersey governor win the White House. The list includes at least one former congressman, business executives, and some hedge fund managers. Bill Cosby is now calling for court sanctions against a woman who is accusing him of sexual assault. 78, the 78 year old comedian says former Temple University employee Andrea Constad violated a confidentiality agreement after a, a deposition rather leaked to the New York Times. That deposition, uh, in that deposition, Cosby admits to multiple affairs. He also admits to getting quaaludes with the intent of giving them to women. The next story is so weird that it could only happen in Florida. A woman going by the Twitter handle at Rosa Sparks tweeted, quote, somebody bring me some weed. I'll pay for it. And somebody responded. It was the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. They tweeted her back saying, where should we meet you? They did not ask her if they should bring handcuffs, though. No exact word on what happened from there. And there's another weird one right here. A diner owner in Maine posted a profanity laced rant on Facebook about a family who visited her restaurant in the post. She calls the family's screaming child a beast and a monster. The post went viral after the child's mother called out the diner owner on her own Facebook page. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the Sandra Bland case. Last night, officials released dash cam footage of her arrest. She is the Black Lives Matter activist who investigators say hanged herself in jail three days after her arrest. It followed a routine traffic stop, which escalated into accusations of assault on a state trooper named Brian Inciana. Some critics are now saying the video was edited due to breaks where you can see cars sort of disappear on the camera. If you look closely, you might see it. Bland's arrest or apparent suicide, rather, is also being investigated as a murder, as a precaution due to the suspicious circumstances here. The Texas State Police Agency has now responded to reports that the video was cut down, saying, quote, the entire video was uploaded. Some of that video occurred during this uh, conversion was uh, some of the problems that were affected by the upload. That is being addressed. We are working to repost the dash cam video. Stay tuned on that. Before the dash cam footage was released, though, the Texas Department of Public Safety had already requested that the FBI investigate and state police are also looking into Brian and Siana, the trooper, uh, to see if he did anything wrong. Here to discuss this is our Wednesday roundtable, Dr. Tiffany Sanders, and rejoining us is radio host and columnist for The Washington Times, Tim Constantine. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having me. Hi there. All right, we want to do this by taking a look at the mindset of both parties involved and how this traffic stop got so heated. In order to do that, we have edited two versions of the video, one with Bland's words and one with the officers. Let's start with Bland. Right, and what we edited out there were some of her profanity and also uh, some antagonism towards that police officer. Dr. Tiffany, let's start with you. What do you hear when you listen to Bland's words? I hear a woman that, um, as, an as she's an activist for Black Lives Matter, um, is experiencing what she has spoken out against. And so she's, she's really uh, challenging the police officer in a way that is making him probably feel likely insecure um, and intimidated because she is saying, you feel good about this matter, huh? You really feel good? So that level of antagonism that she's demonstrating, she's also probably doing it likely because She's saying that, hey, I studied this. I know what um, Black Lives Matter mean. I know what police brutality looks like. And so she was really challenging his authority to make him feel probably very insecure and, and quite likely uh, dumb for his actions. Well, Tim, the end result was her getting arrested in a very uh, you know, difficult way. What's your take on her words? Well, you know, in these black and white issues, we like to pretend they're black and white, and they're not. There are two parties here. Both of them are rude. You haven't played the police officer's part yet, but neither one of them should talk that way. You and I don't talk that way. Tiffany and I wouldn't talk that way. There's no need to be antagonistic, and there's no need for the police officer to be that rude. I'll take it out of the police realm, and let's think of something we could all relate to. When you travel at the airport and your flight is canceled, who's the only person that can help you? 
the gate agent. They can rebook you. But how many times have we seen someone up there cursing and swearing at that gate agent? It's, it's just, forget the police side of it. It's just basic courtesy. When you have someone who is supposed to be helping you, it serves absolutely no purpose to be rude to them. She's being rude wait, here. Wait, wait, wait. The officer is completely out of line as well. The two of them both need a little social engineering. All right, Tiffany, we only have about 30 seconds left before our commercial breaks. So I don't want to cut you off. We will give you a chance to respond to what Tim had to say when we come right back. And as he mentioned, we have not yet played the officer's side of this. We are going to play that part of the video when we come right back. We want to ask Dr. Tiffany Sanders and Tim Constantine to stick around. We're going to have much more ahead here on Newsmax Now. This is a really uh, troubling story in many ways. We'll continue to examine it right after this. Welcome back for part two of our roundtable. Dr. Tiffany Sanders and radio host and columnist for The Washington Times, Tim Constantine. Thank you both for being back with us. Uh, Dr. Tiffany, I want to give you a chance. I thought I heard you pipe up there. You wanted to respond to Tim. Go ahead. I did. You know, Tim was making it sound as if in the situations in the airport, if we are in need of help, we shouldn't be berating or uh, belligerent with a uh, representative who's going to issue us another ticket. In this situation, the officer was not providing help. The officer was antagonizing, provoking, escalating the situation. And since this young lady knew her rights, he became intimidated and became a bully. So in, in her case, she was defending herself. She probably could have used a different choice of words, but I don't want us to look at it as, as we were laying, laying blame at Sandra Bland's feet. Sandra was uh, knowledgeable of her rights, and truth be told, the police officer was completely out of line. All right, so let's listen to you what know, the police... Well, hold, hold on one second, When you're swearing at people, there's just no need to communicate that. Well, let's hold on one second. Let's listen to specifically what that trooper said Right now, take a listen. Oh, you seem very irritated. You mind putting out your cigarette, please? Don't mind. Well, you can step on out now. Okay. Step out of the car. My, step no, out of the car. No, you don't have the right. Step do not, out of the car. Do I do have the right. Now step I out or I will say, remove you. Step out or I will remove you. Step out or I will remove you. I'm giving you a lawful order. Get out of the car now or I'm going to remove you. I'm going to yank you out of here. Yeah. We're going to. Yeah. Get no, out of the car. Said, you are the under car. arrest. Get out of the car. Get out of the car now. I said get out of the car. You I'm giving you a lawful order. I'm going to drag you out of here. Get out of the car. And then you I will light me? you up. Get out. Wow. Now. Wow. Get out of the car. Really for a failure to signal. You're doing all of this for Get over there. Go ahead. Get off the phone. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the laws are in the state of Texas. He does say he was giving her a lawful order, and he asked several times, Tim, what do you say? Well, I mean, his manner, he, he escalates it. I have no, no disagreement with Dr. Tiffany there. But the point is, both of these people are at fault for escalating the situation. There is a way to interact with other human beings that maintains some level of civility. You would hope that police officers would be trained in customer service, for lack of a better word. And, and what you find, interestingly, this is a state trooper, oftentimes state troopers are better at it than local officers, maybe not in this case, but it doesn't give the person in the vehicle any right to be dropping F-bombs and swearing. That's not going to help the situation now, either. Tiffany, so, Tiffany, do you think the officer... I think both of them play some part in this, and you can't just lay it off on one or on the other. Tiffany, in this case, do you think the officer should have gone back to his car and perhaps waited for another officer to arrive or perhaps let her make that phone call? She's trying to call, I believe she said, her lawyer. Well, I, you know, we got to go back a couple of steps. What the officer should have done was uh, give her the ticket and not ask her how she's feeling because it wasn't some indication that she was disoriented. It wasn't an indication she was having a psychotic moment. So he was, again, provoking. And the response he got, he disliked. The officer was taking it personal. What the officer should have done was give her the ticket and go home or go about his business. And what he did was is commanding her to put out her cigarette, and she is in the comfort of her car. She does not have to do that. Yeah, I do agree with you there on that point. I don't know if it was necessary uh, for him to tell her to put out her cigarette. I don't know. We'll see what happens with this. Obviously, more investigation to come, guys. Uh, real quickly, let's switch our focus to Bill Cosby, America's one-time family man. Now parts of his past are being unveiled, one unflattering drip drop at a time. Every story coming out very uh, almost every day. Let's take a listen. In a court filing Tuesday, Cosby demanded sanctions against Andrea Constand, one of the 40 women accusing him of sexual assault. According to Reuters, Cosby claims the Canadian woman breached a confidentiality agreement by allegedly leaking the full 2005 deposition to the New York Times. 
All right, guys, we just have about less than a minute left. We'll try to do this in a yes or no answer. Tiffany, should Bill Cosby keep his mouth shut here, or does he have no choice but to defend himself? Keep his mouth shut. He looks more like a bully trying to control a woman that he's already looks guilty about raping. He should just shut up. All right, Tim, what do you say? Yeah, he denied, denied, denied. Now it's his own words hanging him, and he's trying to blame the woman. The guy needs to quiet down, and frankly, he needs to be behind bars. Yeah, well... I don't know, a lot of statute of limitations issues there, but these stories continue to come out. does not look good for Cosby, and more and more of his one-time supporters are leaving him in the dust. Tim Constantine, Dr. Tiffany Sanders, thanks so much for being with us. A pleasure to speak with both of you on these, you. On these matters. Thank you. All right, we've got much more to come here on Newsmax now. We're going to take a look at your global headlines coming up. We have more of your viewer comments in a few moments as well. Uh, and also, we're going to continue to take a look at Donald Trump, of course, uh, what are most voters saying about him and who is winning and who is losing over the last week in the polls, some big movers up there that's coming up as well. Now, when we continue right here on Newsmax, as we continue here on Newsmax now, let's take a look at uh, what's coming up next with uh, Governor Scott Walker. Uh, he may not want to answer this particular question. Do you think that being gay is a choice? No, no, I don't have, I don't have opinion on, on every single issue out there. I mean, to me, that's, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Is Governor Scott Walker speaking from the gut there, or is he poll testing his answers? We'll have all that when we take a look at the polls, uh, some new polls, too. One it could be damaging for Hillary Clinton's campaign right after this.